Throughout World War II, Germany, along with nearly every other combatant nation, attempted to gain a technological superiority over its enemies in an effort to produce a device that could win the war. Though this singular war-winning device was never completed for Germany, they did construct many Wunderwaffe, or wonder weapons, that both helped and hurt their chances of winning the war. Among the most successful Wunderwaffe was the Jet, a technology that Germany had used more than any other nation in World War II and had the most advanced series of compared, again, to all other nations. Even in the waning weeks and months of the war, Germany continued top secret, highly advanced research that would be applied to many applications over the coming years and decades. Though most of these technologies researched in the last months of World War II by Germany were never fully fleshed out, they served as the foundation for many scientific and military advancements in the following decades. One such technology was the Messerschmitt P-1101, a highly advanced German jet from World War II that featured variable sweep wings that was captured just prior to flight testing. The P-1101 had its beginnings in the 1930s with both the development of the first flyable jet, the Heinkel 178, and the beginnings of the design of the Me-262, the world's first production fighter jet. While Germany had also worked on another suitable fighter jet, the lesser known HE-280, the Me-262 is seen as one of the most important and revolutionary designs in aviation history, as it featured a heavy armament, jet engines, and swept wings, things that would all become synonymous with fighter jets from this point forward. Though the Me-262 did incorporate a slight wing sweep, it was due to a design necessity, as the engines proved larger than initially anticipated and could not be integrated into the fuselage as planned. This forced the engines onto the wings and made it necessary to sweep the wings back due to weight issues concerning the plane's center of gravity. After testing and calculations, it was found that swept wings would be highly advantageous in fast flight, as, among other things, they help planes maintain control while going close to the speed of sound, and they do delay the onset of shock waves due to the approach of the Mach 1 barrier. As the designs for the first fighter jets developed and the Me-262 went into full production, it was soon obvious to the Luftwaffe High Command that they would need not only a more advanced design to help stem the tide of the Allies into Germany from both sides, but more planes to do so. With this in consideration, the Emergency Fighter Program was issued on July 15, 1944, as a way to develop numerous designs as quickly as possible to help Germany win the war. While, in hindsight, this fighter program did not make Germany win the war, nor did it even prolong the war, it did create many advanced designs, of which one could argue that the P-1101 was the most advanced, at least of those that were actually built. The first design for the P-1101 was finished on July 24, 1944, just nine days after the program had started. It took several different forms prior to having a prototype built, but once it had been built, it had the following dimensions and performance characteristics. The P-1101 had a length of about 30 feet, or just over 9 meters, a wingspan of 27 feet, or about 8 and a quarter meters, a gross weight of 9,000 pounds, or about 4,065 kilograms, which was actually quite low compared to the first generation's ME-262, which had a weight of 14,270 pounds, or about 6,473 kilograms. Additionally, the P-1101 had a top speed of about 610 miles per hour, or 980 kilometers per hour, compared to the ME-262's 560 miles per hour, or 900 kilometers per hour total. This represented about a 50 mile per hour increase in top speed for just a slight improvement in air design. The P-1101 also had a single HES 011A engine producing 12 kilonewtons of force compared to two Junkers Jumo 004 engines producing less than 9 kilonewtons each. Additionally, the P-1101 had a cruise speed calculated to be marginally higher than the ME-262's top speed which represented a great leap forward in jet fighter design. The P-1101 also had a service ceiling of about 40,000 to 45,000 feet, depending on the source. For armaments, it carried four 30mm MK-108 cannons, which was the same as the ME-262's armament. However, it also had the capability to carry four Rostal X-4 air-to-air missiles. These were manually guided missiles 
but could effectively increase the combat range of a plane by several kilometers if used correctly. Additionally, as an added bonus over the ME-262, the P-1101 could take off from around 700 meters of runway, whereas the ME-262 could do so in an average of around 1,000 meters. This represented a huge advantage over the current version of the ME-262, as it was most vulnerable on takeoff and landing. Future versions of the ME-262, possibly bringing it into the second generation with the HG series and also uh, advancements to the Junkers Jumo 004 engine, such as afterburners, which were actually already on prototype versions of the 004, could have leveled the playing field with the P-1101. As it was, however, the Allies would have likely started bringing in jets into combat roles, and by that time, the ME-262 would start getting long in the tooth, so to speak, as it was initially designed in the 1930s. This said, the P-1101 had entered wind tunnel testing in November of 1944, with the decision to enter production being made the following month, with material selection also being made that December. Then, on February 28, 1945, the Luftwaffe High Command decided to shelve the P-1101 in favor of the TA-183 Hakabine, itself being an immensely important aircraft in post-war aircraft design. Because the P-1101 had a significant amount of physical progress already made, it was decided to reduce funding rather than kill the P-1101 completely. The decision to go with the TA-183 was due in part because the cannon setup on the P-1101 was proving to be a huge technical issue, as there was little room in the fuselage for them. The P-1101, due to the worsening war situation, was given the ME-262's wings, but with the capability of a 30, 40, and 45 degree wing sweep that could be adjusted just prior to flight. At this point, the intended production engine, the HES-011A, was not available. So the already in production Junkers Jumo 004 was intended to act as the engine for initial flight tests. As the war was drawing closer to a close, and with the P-1101 still not flight tested, the facility in which the plane was housed, Oberammergau, fell to the Western Allies on April 29th, unscathed due to the fact that the facility was until that point unknown to the Allies and thus safe from bombing campaigns. The Allies captured the plane as it was 80% completed in a tunnel, along with the schematics largely being found near it. Although only one V-1 prototype was mostly completed, several other designs sharing a similar airframe were also studied, including the ramjet-powered P-1101L and the P-1101-99, which would have used four HES-011 engines and acted as a bomber destroyer with a 75mm cannon in front of the plane attached in the fuselage. With the P-1101 captured, there was a large push between the Americans and the chief designer of the project, Valdemar Voigt, to complete the plane in July 1945, but it was found that the French had the documents necessary to complete the aircraft and they refused to hand them over. Over the following three years, the plane sat and became damaged due to the elements and improper handling, partially at the hands of military personnel posing with it for photos. In 1948, it was finally shipped to Bell Aircraft in Buffalo, New York, but was damaged in transit, making it so that the plane would never fly. It was, however, largely copied in the form of the Bell X-5, which was essentially a carbon copy of the P-1101 on the outside, except with some slight alterations, a more powerful engine, and wings that could be swept back in flight. The Bell X-5, being essentially a much more advanced version of the P-1101, proved that variable sweep wings were not only practical, but beneficial, and could be used on production aircraft like the F-14 Tomcat, F-111 Aardvark, the MiG-27, and many more planes. Ultimately, while its wings were clipped, even despite the protests of some of the Allies, the P-1101 went on to serve as a plane many years ahead of its time, all without ever leaving the ground. It was arguably the first true second-generation fighter, all while the first generation had hardly even taken to the skies yet. The P-1101, though largely unknown, will always be an interesting what-if plane, and more importantly, will always be a landmark plane in aviation history. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed my video and could really learn a lot from it. If you genuinely enjoyed my video, please press the subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell.
In the future, I hope to come out with similar content, largely focusing on World War II and the unknown facets of it. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care, everyone.